Portal Hypertension Introduction Portal hypertension is an increase in the blood pressure within a system of veins called the portal venous system. Veins coming from the stomach, intestine, spleen, and pancreas merge into the portal vein, which then branches into smaller vessels and travels through the liver. If the vessels in the liver are blocked due to liver damage, blood cannot flow properly through the liver. As a result, high pressure in the portal system develops. This increased pressure in the portal vein may lead to the development of large, swollen veins, varices, within the esophagus, stomach, rectum, or umbilical area, belly button. Varices can rupture and bleed, resulting in potentially life-threatening complications. Definition Portal hypertension occurs when there is an obstruction of blood flow through the liver, and pressure rises within the portal vein. This obstruction can be intrahepatic, intra is equal to within plus hepatic is equal to liver, prehepatic, pre is equal to before, or posthepatic, post is equal to after. Portal hypertension is hypertension, high blood pressure, in the hepatic portal system, made up of the portal vein and its branches that drain from most of the intestine to the liver. Portal hypertension is an increase in the pressure within the portal vein, which carries blood from the digestive organs to the liver. The most common cause is cirrhosis of the liver, but thrombosis, clotting, might also be the cause. Causes The causes for portal hypertension are classified as originating in the portal venous system before it reaches the liver, prehepatic causes, within the liver, intrahepatic, or between the liver and the heart, posthepatic. The most common cause is cirrhosis, chronic liver failure. Other causes include prehepatic causes, portal vein thrombosis, splenic vein thrombosis, arteriovenous fistula, increased portal blood flow, splenomegaly and slash or hypersplenism, increased portal blood flow, hepatic causes, cirrhosis of any cause, for example, alcohol abuse, Chronic viral hepatitis, biliary atresia, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, chronic pancreatitis, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, schistosomiasis, congenital hepatic fibrosis, nodular regenerative hyperplasia, fibrosis of space of D's, granulomatous or infiltrative liver diseases. Gosher, mucopolysaccharidosis, sarcoidosis, lymphoproliferative malignancies, amyloid deposition. Toxicity, from arsenic, copper, vinyl chloride monomers, mineral oil, vitamin A, azathioprine, dacarbazine, methotrexate, amiodarone etc. Viral hepatitis. Fatty liver disease. Veinoocclusive disease. Post-hepatic causes Inferior vena cava obstruction Right-sided heart failure, e.g. from constrictive pericarditis Bud, Chiari syndrome also known as hepatic vein thrombosis Pathophysiology Signs and symptoms Signs and symptoms of portal hypertension include Ascites, free fluid in the peritoneal cavity Abdominal pain or tenderness, when bacteria infect the ascites, as in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis Increased spleen size, splenomegaly, which may lead to lower platelet counts, thrombocytopenia Anorectal varices esophageal and gastric varices swollen veins on the anterior abdominal wall sometimes referred to as caput medusae in addition a widened dilated portal vein as seen on a ct scan or mri may raise the suspicion about portal hypertension a cutoff value of 13 millimeters is widely used in this regard but the diameter is often larger than this is in normal individuals as well diagnosis History taking, take a complete medical, surgical, dietary,
Personal Habits, Socioeconomic History with Sign and Symptoms Onset Physical Examination, Usually, Doctors make the diagnosis of portal hypertension based on the presence of ascites or of dilated veins or varices as seen during a physical exam of the abdomen or the anus. Ultrasonography, USG, is the first line imaging technique for the diagnosis and follow up of portal hypertension because it is non invasive, low cost, and can be performed on site. The hepatic venous pressure gradient, HVPG, Measurement has been accepted as the gold standard for assessing the severity of portal hypertension. Portal hypertension is defined as HVPG greater than or equal to 5 mm Hg and is considered to be clinically significant when HVPG exceeds 10 to 12 mm Hg. A dilated portal vein, diameter of greater than 13 or 15 mm, is a sign of portal hypertension. Other signs of portal hypertension on ultrasound include a portal flow mean velocity of less than 12 cm s. Laboratory testing. Complete blood count. Liver function test associated blood tests, egg, aspartate aminotransferase, ast, alanine aminotransferase, alt, bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, ALB. Type and crossmatch. Coagulation studies, prothrombin time. PT, partial thromboplastin time, PTT, international normalized ratio, INR, prolonged INR is suggestive of impaired hepatic synthetic function. Albumin, hypolbuminemia is common. Impaired hepatic synthetic function. Blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, and electrolytes. Arterial blood gas, ABG, and pH measurements. Hepatic and viral hepatitis serologies particularly hepatitis B and C serologies. Other laboratory tests may include the following. Antinuclear antibody, antimithochondrial antibody, anti-smooth muscle antibody. Iron indices. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Ceruloplasmin, 24-hour urinary copper. Consider this test only in individuals aged 3 to 40 years who have unexplained hepatic, neurologic, or psychiatric disease. Imaging studies. Duplex Doppler ultrasonography of the liver and upper abdomen. Computed tomography, CT, scanning and or magnetic resonance imaging, MRI can be used when ultrasonographic findings are inconclusive. Bleeding scan or angiography, used when bleeding is obscure and the source is unclear. Procedures. Liver biopsy and histologic examination. Hemodynamic measurement of the hepatic venous pressure gradient, HVPG a criterion standard for assessment of portal hypertension. Upper GI endoscopy, or, esophagogastroduodenoscopy, EGD, a criterion standard for assessment of varices. Management. The treatment of portal hypertension is divided into Portosystemic shunts. Selective shunts select non-intestinal flow to be shunted to the systemic venous drainage while leaving the intestinal venous drainage to continue to pass through the liver. The most well-known of this type is the spenorenal. This connects the splenic vein to the left renal vein thus reducing portal system pressure while minimizing any encephalopathy. In an H shunt, which could be mesocaval, from the superior mesenteric vein to the inferior vena cava, or could be, portocaval, from the portal vein to the inferior vena cava, a graft, either synthetic or the preferred vein harvested from elsewhere on the patient's body, is connected between the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior vena cava. The size of this shunt will determine how selective it is. With the advent of transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunting TIPS, portosystemic shunts are less performed. TIPS has the advantage of being easier to perform and doesn't disrupt the liver's vascularity. Prevention of bleeding from varices. Both pharmacological, non-specific beta blockers, nitrate isosorbide mononitrate, vasopressin such as terlipressin, and endoscopic, banding ligation, treatment have similar results. TIPS transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunting is effective at reducing the rate of rebleeding. The management of active variceal bleeding includes administering vasoactive drugs, somatostatin, octreotide, 
endoscopic banding ligation, balloon tamponade, and tips. Ascites. The management of ascites needs to be gradual to avoid sudden changes in systemic volume status which can precipitate hepatic encephalopathy, kidney failure, and death. The management includes salt restriction, diuretics, spironolactone, paracentesis, and transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. Hepatic encephalopathy. A treatment plan may involve lactulose, enemas, and use of antibiotics such as rifaximin, neomycin, vancomycin, and the quinolones. Restriction of dietary protein was recommended but this is now refuted by a clinical trial which shows no benefit. Instead, the maintenance of adequate nutrition is now advocated. Complications Complications of portal hypertension may present with the following symptoms. Hemicmesis or melina, may indicate gastroesophageal variceal bleeding or bleeding from portal gastropathy. Mental status changes, may indicate the presence of portosystemic encephalopathy. Increasing abdominal girth, may indicate ascites formation. Abdominal pain and fever, may indicate spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, although this disease also presents without symptoms. Hematochesia, may indicate bleeding from portal colopathy or enlarged hemorrhoids.